hello everyone i welcome you all to the third lecture of week 1 or module 1 of the mooc course on laser based uh, manufacturing in this lecture we will be studying the laser system uh, its construction and various types of lasers which are used in the industry in our previous class we have seen how exactly laser is getting produced what its uh, principle of operation what is the meaning of uh, the population inversion as well so let us revise uh, again the concept of population uh, inversion as we have seen that to get the stimulated emission we should have more number of excited atoms at higher quantum level and when they decay from higher energy state to the lower energy state they emit photons and when these photons are getting in line with or in phase with or with a similar wavelength of the passing photons we are getting the coherent monochromatic and uh, highly collimated beam of uh, light that is the laser now there are various terms which are being used in the industry and in the research of laser based manufacturing that first term which is very popular and important is population inversion there are various materials we use and these materials are having a various or different number of energy levels so when we considered a material at thermal equilibrium the population of the atoms at at lower energy level is more than of the upper energy level but for production of laser we want the population of uh, atoms at higher energy level more than the lower energy level and this condition is called as the population inversion so this is a very basic phenomena very basic thing which is must to generate the laser beam but to produce the laser we should continuously pump uh, external energy to get that uh, exact uh, amount of photons or sufficient amount of photons to generate the laser beam then the next term is the metastable term so what is the meaning of metastable it is an excited state of an atom or other system with longer life time than the other excited states so as we have seen that uh, various materials are having various energy levels the metastable state is an excited state of an atom when it is having longer life time than the other excited states this particular state is very much essential to have the emission of photons from the the process of population inversion the metastable state is having lifetime of course more than the stable ground state and in general it is in the order of 10 to the 2 power minus 3 second the third important aspect or term which is there in the laser based manufacturing or laser technology is active material so we want to generate the photons which are producing the laser but who will produce that laser what material we have to utilize to generate the the series of photons or a, the bunch of photons or a population of photons which will generate uh, the laser beam so that material which is being used in generation of the laser technology is called as the active material so this active material can be a gas or can be a solid or can be a liquid and this active material also being called as uh, the lasing medium as well so we will see various types of uh, these lasing materials or the source of generation of the the lasers in our next few slides now let us start discussing about how exactly we produce the laser and what is its construction so in laser we required a basic component that is called as resonator 
So, we have seen that in population inversion, in population inversion, we are getting stimulated emission. So, this emission is stimulated and we are getting a lot of photons. So, population inversion we can write here as it has a very huge capability to amplify the photons. So, this amplification, the population inversion has ability to amplify a signal to stimulated emission. But the problem during a population inversion is that during a single pass, overall gain in single pass, the gain means the enhancement that we get in the number of photons in single pass is quite small. Now, our target or our objective is to enhance this. So, we have to enhance the gain, we have to produce as much as number of the photons so that we can get high power density laser beam. So, what is required to enhance this? Another point in the population inversion is that most of the excited atoms emits spontaneously. So, during this single pass, most of the excited atoms, they are, they are emitting the photons spontaneously. So, most of the atoms emit the photons spontaneously. And therefore, we get not considerable output from the single pass amplification. Moreover, whatever the number of photons which are getting created due to the spontaneous emission will not contribute to the overall output. Overall output is the laser beam that we want at the end of the operation. So, these are not that much contributing the spontaneous uh, uh, emission photons. So, what we need to have? We need to have a positive feedback system or positive feedback mechanism in which the majority atoms in the population will contribute. So, we want to enhance the contribution of the atoms. So, majority atoms in the population should contribute, they should participate in generation of a coherent output. So, majority atoms in population should contribute to get a, to get a coherent output. So, meaning is that we do not want to have a, just a single pass. So, we have to have multiple number of passes of this the photons that to be transmitted during the operation. So, there the concept of a resonator came into picture. So, resonator is having a system of mirrors. So, reson resonator is nothing but a system of mirrors. So, these mirrors are arranged in a, in a parallel way and the photons are just uh, moving back and forth in between these mirrors. So, what is happening during this back and forth movement of the, the photons? Some of the off axis photons, they will get reflect out. So, these mirrors are also providing two basic operations 
that some of the off axis photons these mirrors are arranged in a, in a parallel way in this manner this is a set of a pair of two mirrors and it has an axis as well. So, inside this cavity, the cavity made by two set of mirror. So, this is mirror number 1 mirror 2, both of them are having high reflectivity. So, the photons are just moving back and forth, they are getting reflected by these mirrors, but some of the some of the photons which are off axis. So, some of the photons are off axis. So, this set of mirrors will reflect them out. Because as we have seen that uh, during the population inversion and the stimulated emission, large number of photons are getting generated. Some of the photons are off axis photons, which are generated by using the spontaneous emission. So, that photons are to be reflect out. So, this system of mirrors is reflecting out these off axis photons and the photons which are on axis along the axis. So, these on axis photons are used to generate the collimated beam. So, these on axis photons are desirable in our operation and certainly they will be moving back and forth inside this cavity and when they move back and forth inside the cavity, they will further excite the other atoms. So, these photons are not only moving between the mirror 1 and mirror 2, they are doing the work of excitation of the atom, production of more number of photons and some of the photons again will be on axis and some of them may be off axis. So, it is a, the process of amplification. So, these on axis photons are helping to generate more to have a better amplification of uh, uh, the, uh, the laser beam. But how we will be doing this operation? So, to carry out this operation to generate, we need to have a certain medium and that medium is called as the lasing medium. So, this would be done with the help of a medium, certain material and that is called as a lasing material or lasing medium and to excite the atoms, we need an external energy source external excitation source. So, that that also very useful for us. Here we are having the excitation mechanism. So, this excitation mechanism is pumping energy inside the laser system and that energy will be useful to generate more number of photons to get the required laser production. So, there are three basic components of a laser based system, a pair of mirrors or a laser medium and the excitation mechanism. So, these are the three main components elements of a laser based system. So, we can say that the lasing medium is continuously being pumped by the external excitation mechanism. So, lasing medium is continuously pumped by 
yes. So, lasing medium is continuously pumped and that is generating the required population inversion at lasing wavelength. So, this is very important here. So, we want the population inversion, it should be at the lasing wavelength only. Then and then only we can generate the required laser beam. So, during this process what is happening that the excited atoms which are moving back and forth which are uh, contributing for generation of the photons they will get decayed and that decaying is generating the photons as we have seen using the spontaneous emission. But this spontaneous emission is in all directions. So, what we want the spontaneous emitted electrons or the atoms that to be come along the axis or on axis which will contribute for laser production. So, this along axis photons when we allow them to move or allow them to reflect by using a set of mirrors as we have seen previously, we are making them to act more and generate more number of photons by interacting with the other atoms. So, these photons are interacting with other atoms and then they are generating more number of photons. So, in this way the spontaneous emission will get reduced and slowly the stimulated emission will get enhanced. So, how this stimulated emission is getting enhanced is due to the back and forth movement of these uh, photons. But after certain time these photons will also get uh, decayed, they will lose their energy during this movement. To enhance their energy and to generate more and more number of photons, we need to have the external excitation mechanism. Now, when these uh, photons are moving back and forth between mirror 1 and mirror 2, after some time we have to take out some of the photons for our intended purpose. So, consider we are having highly refractive mirror 1, this is the highly reflective and mirror 2 is also highly reflective. So, no output will be produced, no photon will come out from this cavity, from this region. So, what we make here, we are making this M2 as a partially transmittive, some of the portion or some of the photons are to be transmitted out, they are to be taken out from this cavity. So, to make this possible, we are making M2 that is mirror number 2 partially transmitting, partially transmitting. So, the photons will be keep on moving and some of the portion will be open and through that we are taking out a beam of photons and that would be used for our intended purpose. Now, the question is that 
how much amount or how much percentage is getting transmitted out from this cavity so this may be a fraction of a uh, percent fraction of percent there are many types of lasers being used so fraction of percent will get transmitted and the example is HENE laser helium neon laser so only fraction of percentage of the on axis photons which are getting generated will get transmitted out but there are certain types of lasers which are transmitting out about 50 percent or more so these kind of lasers also available and these are the the high power lasers which are very much useful in our manufacturing operation so these high power lasers which are having more capacity to transmit out the photons from the optical cavity or the resonator now when we consider a pair of mirrors and in in between this pair of mirrors the photons are getting moving back and forth so this is the back and forth movement of the photons So there are basically two modes in which we can get the laser and that is called as the stable laser and the second one is unstable laser. So let us see what is the meaning of a stable laser and unstable laser. So laser is called as a stable when a ray which is injected when a ray injected into the optical cavity or a beam of photons which is there in a optical cavity or optical system a ray injected into the optical system. will stay at a finite distance from the axis so this ray will always be at a finite will always be at a finite system a uh, finite distance at a finite distance from what it is from the axis it is from the axis so a ray we are injecting so we can consider these as rays and these rays are staying at a finite distance from the center of the system from the center of the system or from the axis of the system in this case it is axis of the system after many rounds of trips these rays are parallel to each other and they are at finite distance from the center so that we call a stable laser uh, it is generally possible or uh, all the laser which are we are using uh, from low power to the medium power they are the stable lasers but when we consider a high power laser when we want to have high uh, output from a laser system then we are applying more excitation energy excitation mechanism and the rays which are 
coming out which are getting diverged from the axis of the system that energy that diver, diverged photons we have to collect them and then apply or then we, we can use them for our intended purpose. So, geometrically or technically we can consider these as when the, the rays would sooner or later leave the resonator. Why they are leaving? They are getting diverged from the axis. So, they will leave the resonator optical cavity and that rays we have to collect them out and we have to take it out and use to generate a laser beam. And generally this divergence is occurring in transverse direction. So, this leaving or the diversion divergence is occurring in transverse direction but still we are making use of this uh, high capacity laser beam by collecting this diverged photons for our purpose. So, let us summarize the constructional details that we have seen till now. A laser is having some of the basic components and that basic components are a set of mirrors that we have seen. We require one completely reflecting mirror, totally reflecting mirror and we require one partially reflecting mirror to get the output from the laser system, to get the photons coupled out from the laser system. The photons which are moving back and forth are generated by using an active medium or a lasing medium. So, this is the second component of the laser system and as we have seen that we need to have external excitation. So, this is the excitation mechanism, pumping source. Fine. So, these are the constructional details. So, we required a mirror, the same thing I have uh, summarized uh, in words in this particular slide. So, we required one mirror which is partially transparent or uh, partially reflective and it is allowing some oscillating power to emerge as the operating laser beam. The other mirror is totally reflecting to the best it can be achieved and these mirrors are having curved shape so that we can get a proper reflections and there has to be a little diffraction. The divergence should be as less as possible, diffraction losses should be as much as less possible. We required an active medium for light amplification through uh, the stimulation. And the last very important part is the pumping source and based on the pumping source itself, there are various types of uh, lasers which are uh, getting used and the, the, the function of the pumping source is to energize the active medium. There are many lasers which are also classified based upon the active medium as well. What are the various types of pumping source being used? The electrical energy that we use either in terms of the direct current or the RF that is a radio frequency power supply. And these are in general used for the lasers such as the carbon dioxide laser, excimer laser and helium neon the gas lasers. We can also use focused pulse of light. We can use the light beams or the light as uh, and uh, we can use light as a, a pumping source and these are in general used for a solid laser that is uh, the India laser. 
The pumping source can be a chemical energy as well. So, chemical reaction of some of the, uh, the chemicals can be utilized to provide the, the external excitation and these are uh, done in general uh, the iodine laser. So, one of the examples of the utilization of chemical reaction is the iodine laser. Now, some aspects about the cavity or the resonator that we will see here. The laser cavity is an optical oscillator in which the laser beam or the, the photons are oscillating between the two uh, mirrors. So, as we have seen that the cavity can be stable or unstable, it is all depends upon the convergence or the divergence of the laser beam in between the set of uh, mirrors. So, when mirror curvature is at either end should fall within the certain value to keep cavity stable else it loses power around the edge of the output. So, if we are converging the power then we are getting a collimated beam at the center or about the axis. But if the divergence is there of the laser power then we can get the laser power around the edge of the mirror. So, from that uh, the annular region, uh, the, the circular region about the mirror, we can take out the uh, laser power as well. The lasers up to 2 kilowatt are called as the stable cavity designs and they are providing safe transmission of power at this power level without risk of breakage. So, whatever the photons which are uh, oscillating or reflecting, they will not harm the mirrors and the output mirror is partially transparent the way we have seen in our previous discussion. And uh, this is possible, this pa partially transparency is possible by using certain coating materials and what are the various coating materials which are available is zinc selenide, gallium arsenide, cadmium telluride for the COT type of lasers and BKC and BK7 fused silica glass for the YAC type of lasers. In high power range for high power lasers, the unstable cavity design is used and the power is generally taken from the edge of the output mirror uh, to avoid the risk of breakage at this power. So, this divergence is expected, it is desired. So, to avoid uh, the harm or to, to avoid the damage uh, to the system. The output mirror is totally reflecting, it is a metal optic we are using here but the annular from the annular region we can we are taking out the laser beam for our application. The stable cavity also has some sort of aerodynamic windows which are uh, based upon the venturi arrangement so that we can get the collimated beam at the center at the axis of the laser system itself. The shape of the stable beam is basically dependent upon the output aperture. So, this shape is controlled by the output aperture for the stable uh, type of the cavity design. But for the unstable beam, the edge of the output, the shape which is at the edge of the output reflecting mirror will decide uh, uh, the shape. The edge of the output reflecting mirror will decide the shape of the beam in case of unstable beam. Now, let us understand the stable and unstable mode of the laser operation. As we have seen that in the stable mode, the beam is oscillating several times inside the cavity. So, how it is possible to have the continuous oscillation of the laser beam inside the cavity. So, this is possible by using two spherical mirrors. So, consider this is mirror 1 
and we are having another spherical mirror that is mirror 2. So, when a beam is starting from mirror 1, it will get struck to the mirror 2, then from this place it is getting reflected, it will come back to mirror 1, from mirror 1 again it is getting reflected and it will come to mirror 2 and then further it comes back to mirror 1 and it will keep on oscillating. So, in this way we can achieve a stable mode of laser operation, but during this continuous uh, oscillation there may be chances of having damage to the mirror if the beam is too intense. So, this is happening when we use the laser power more than 2 kilowatt. So, in this kind of scenarios we are using the unstable mode of laser operation. So, in unstable mode we are using a plane mirror. So, this is mirror So, this is mirror M3 which is plane, it is a plane mirror and we are using one spherical mirror. So, this is a spherical mirror that we do have. Now, we start getting the reflection operation. So, consider a mirror is starting from M3. So, this has been starting from M3. So, it will get reflected from M4, it will come to M3 and from M3 it will get diverged. So, it will move in this direction, In a, it will not converge, it will diverge, it will move away from the center or the axis of the system. In a similar way, so we can have the divergence on the other side. So, with this kind of arrangement we are getting the stimulated emission, however, there is the, the divergence and the diverged beam will be utilized for our intended operation. But if you keep on oscillating the laser beam in stable laser, no output will be possible. So, what we do here? we are making the mirror M2 partially transmitting and we will take out the output from the stable laser. So, in general the stable laser is producing a coherent output at its center. So, this is the coherent output that we get at the center from the stable laser. However, in unstable mode we are getting the output at the annular region at the border or at the edge of that spherical mirror and in general we get the output in the unstable mode is of the ring shape. So, high intense beam will get diverged out and we are getting a ring shaped laser beam in case of unstable output. in unstable mode the output is the ring shaped. So, naturally the ring shaped beam is reducing the intensity of the beam and that is reducing the risk of damage to the mirrors. The ring shaped beam is poor for focusing. So, as we are getting the diverged laser beam, so naturally the focusing would be poor. However, we can get the high gain per round trip of the, uh, the laser oscillation. The unstable mode does not require several number of oscillations between the mirrors. The high density power in stable laser we must have several oscillations, several oscillations 
inside the cavity. And this already we have seen that the stable mode is suitable for less than 2 kilowatt and it is more than 2 kilowatt. The laser beam characteristics uh, in our previous class also we have seen there are basically four important characteristics of the laser beam. Uh, first is high monochromaticity, coherence and high intensity. So let us see one by one this uh, laser beam characteristics. In our previous class also we have seen that the laser beam is different than or it is having a peculiar difference between the normal light in these four terms only. So, the high monochromaticity, coherence, high directionality and intensity. So, let us see one by one what is the meaning of high monochromaticity. The laser light being emitted from the active medium by pumping is a combination of photons having same length and same frequency as they are emitted because of transition between the same atomic or molecular energy levels. Thus, the laser beam has a single color. So, monochromaticity means the laser beam will have a single color and the photons which are coming out will have the same wavelength and same frequency. The next characteristic is coherence. The emitted photons by stimulated emission are emitted in phase with those already present in the resonator cavity. So, the coherence is basically is dealing with the phase of the photons. So, when the phase of the photons is similar with the photons which are already present in the resonator cavity both in space and time. So, that, that particular characteristic or property is called as coherence. So, in, in the laser whatever the photons that we are having they are in similar phase same phase. So, high degree of coherence in laser beam generates exceptionally high power laser. So, to have a very high power laser highly coherent beam is very much essential. The third important uh, characteristic is directionality. So, the laser beam is having various photons. These photons are emitted by the stimulated emission and they are having identical direction of propagation. So, when these photons are moving in a same direction, this property makes possible for the laser beam to be focused at a far distance with little convergence. So, when all these photons are propagating in a single direction, identical direction, it is making the lasers to reach at a very far distance with little divergence. The next important characteristic is intensity. The laser beams are giving us high intensity. The laser has high intensity because of its coherence and high directionality. So, these two characteristics that is coherence and high directionality are generating the laser beams which are producing highly intense uh, laser beams. The power density is much more high because we can concentrate on a very small sp spot. So, when the coherence is there, when high directionality is possible it can be concentrated into a small sp spot which is generating highly intense laser power. There are various types of industrial lasers are used in the industry and these can be divided or classified on the basis of various parameters. The first parameter or the type is the number of energy levels. So, we are, which we can have like three levels of energy or four levels of energy. There are various lasers such as ruby laser, copper vapor lasers. These are all coming into three, 
three levels of energy. HE&E laser, India lasers and CO2 lasers are coming in four levels. Further we can classify the industrial lasers based upon the active medium or the lasing medium as I mentioned. So, we can have a solid state laser where active medium is in solid form, ruby laser, India laser or ND glass lasers and titanium sapphire lasers are uh, the examples of solid state laser. We can use liquid as well as an active medium and uh, these are the dye lasers basically. We can use gas as an active medium and the examples are HE&E laser and the CO2 laser. We will be looking at all the lasers when we discuss about the application of these lasers for the manufacturing operation. CO2 lasers or India lasers are very widely used uh, in material processing. We will be looking them into detail when we move ahead. Examer lasers, even diode lasers are also being used in a manufacturing operations. When we use semiconductor material for lasing action that we call the semiconductor lasers, the p-n junction of the semiconductor diode forms can be used as the active medium. And the, the examples are GAS laser or ALGAS laser. So, we will be seeing these uh, types of lasers in our next classes. The industrial lasers also can be classified based upon the nature of the output of the laser beam. So, either we can have the continuous wave when the output is in continuous format over the time that we call the continuous wave. So, we are getting the continuous output over the period of time. So, these are the HE-NE lasers, India lasers or the CO2 lasers. Some of the, the solid uh, lasers such as India can also be available in pulse mode. So, when we apply the power in pulses uh, in a discrete manner, so that is called as the pulse mode laser is in the, in the form of the pulses of light. So, these are the ruby laser, nitrogen laser and examer lasers are some of the examples of the pulse mode laser. Then we can uh, classify the industrial lasers based upon the region of wavelength of the laser beam. So, this already we have seen that there are three classes of the lasers based upon the wavelength that is ultraviolet, visible laser and infrared. So, as we have seen that the visible laser is having the wavelength between 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer and see the ultraviolet light is having uh, the laser uh, wavelength below 400 nanometer. So, infrared is having the higher wavelengths basically. So, infrared are the India lasers or the CO2 lasers. Visible lasers are the ruby, HE&E and the dye lasers. Then there is a, another interesting classification that is based upon the hazards. Lasers are to be operated very carefully. So, based upon the hazards, there is a classification. The class 1 laser is safe under normal use, but it might have an risk when we viewed with the microscope or the telescope of sufficiently high aperture. So, this, these are the class 1 lasers. So, there is a another class in 1 that we call class 1M. It is safe during normal utilization. However, when we pass through a magnifying device such as microscope, it can create problem to us. So, if the laser falls in this class and uh, in if the power that can pass through the pupil of naked eyes is lower than the accessible emission for the class 1. In class 2 type of laser, it is in the, the visible range that is around 400 to 700 nanometer. So, these are the class 2 type of laser. These are safe as the blink reflex will limit the exposure time lower than 0.25 second. 
So even though we are getting exposed this type of laser to our eyes, this the blink reflex of our eye will control the exposure of these lasers to our eyes. However, the intentional holding of the blink reflex could lead to potential eye injury. So, when this laser is applied to our eye and if we intentionally hold the blink reflex, the intensity of this class 2 laser may harm us, will, will create problem to our eye. Several measuring instruments which are there in our laboratories or the laser pointers are coming to this uh, the class 2 type of lasers. Then there is another class here, the class 2M. So, this class laser is safe as the blink reflex if not viewed through the optical instruments. Similar to class M, this class laser lights are with a large divergence. The light passing through the pupil should not exceed the specifications for class 2. So, this is also uh, to be taken care during the, the operation with, uh, with our natural blink reflex. Then we are also having some other types of lasers classes based upon the hazards that is class 3A in which the the laser is safe if handled carefully. So, this is very important. We will be working with the lasers, but if you do not uh, handle them carefully, certainly it is going to harm you. The permissible exposure can be exceeded which is associated with low injury risk. So, this is a class 3A lasers are uh, uh, quite careful to be handled, otherwise we may have low injury risk. Class 3B lasers, these are hazardous if exposed directly to the eye and we must have the protective eyewear during the utilization or during operation using this class 3B lasers. The class 4 are most dangerous among all the lasers and these are basically being used in high power uh, material processing. These are used in military operations, in medical operations, scientific and industrial applications. So, we must be very careful when we are using class 4 type of laser during our operation. There is a high amount of the fire risk during utilization of this kind of lasers. When we use this class 4 lasers, uh, we must have uh, the system should have the safety interlock and a key switch. Now, what are the various types of advantages this laser technology provide us? Since last two classes we have seen that we require a high intensity and high power uh, energy beam and that is provided by the laser. So, this is the biggest advantage as far as the material or the manufacturing processes are concerned. So, we are looking the lasers which are useful for manufacturing operations. We have seen that lasers can be focused on a target area and it is preventing damage to the surrounding area. So, wherever we want to have the processing that much portion will be targeted by the laser and it is not harming, it is not damaging the surrounding area. So, this is very useful advantage we will see during our material processing that is a machining and welding. In welding that we call the heat affected zone in welding. So, there is a term we will be seeing in our coming lectures that is HAZ heat affected zone. So, this heat affected zone is very less when we are using lasers. Lasers are having high flexibility, the conveyance is very simple through uh, nowadays we are using fibers, fiber optic technology to transmit or to convey the lasers wherever it is required. Lasers are used to process different materials, they do have this peculiar uh, capability 
that lasers can be used to process all types of materials, metals, non-metals, conductive, non-conductive materials, all sort of materials can be processed. It is contactless process, it is a toolless manufacturing, so there is no physical mechanical tool and that will save a lot of lead time, so no mechanical forces are present, no friction will occur and that is giving us a lot of saving as per as uh, the product uh, development or product manufacturing time. Lasers are easy in automation, nowadays we are using the CNC that is the computer numerical control systems, so lasers are very well compatible to the advanced CNC systems or, or the automation systems. Lasers can produce any shapes on materials with high accuracy. The accuracy levels of lasers are very high and they are providing us a very good repeatability. In our next week uh, class during machining, these terms will come in, in frequent the accuracy and the repeatability of the process it is in laboratories or in, a, in a industries, we must develop the systems with high accuracy and high repeatability. So, lasers are providing uh, solutions for the same. However, there are certain limitations uh, to the laser system. The initial cost is a uh, little high in comparison with uh, the other manufacturing uh, systems, conventional manufacturing systems the capital cost is high. Lasers are required regular maintenance and they are very delicate and very uh, careful to be handled. So, maintenance cost is high in case of lasers. To handle the lasers, skilled and knowledgeable operators and technocrats are needed. So, this is obvious to have the efficient utilization. So, efficient utilization will require the skilled operators and knowledgeable uh, technocrats. If the lasers are not being used properly, they may be very harmful to the human beings and may cause injury to the users. In material processing, some of the lasers are producing hazardous fumes during uh, the operation and these hazardous fumes are not good for uh, the operator or the human beings. So, with this uh, I would like to stop for uh, the today's lecture. So, let us summarize what we have seen in today's class. We revised the concept of population inversion and we have seen that how to get the population inversion by having a set of mirrors. So, we have seen the concept of resonator or the optical cavity. The construction of a typical laser. Laser system its parts. So, we have also seen that what is the meaning of stable laser and unstable laser. Types of lasers, a detailed classification that we have seen. And at last, we have seen the advantages and limitations. Fine. So, this is the end of week 1. In the next week, that is week 2, we will be working on material removal using lasers material removal using lasers the material removal is the prominent application of 
the laser beam and there are various techniques interesting techniques are there of using lasers for micro level removal macro level removal and the meso level uh, removal as well so we'll be looking at the material removal aspects of lasers in the week 2 so till then thank you for watching this uh, video and listening to the lectures we will see in the next week lecture 1 till then goodbye thank you mm -hmm.